All right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day. Happy Thursday. It is June 2nd, 2022, day 124 of year four of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. Another four-year consecutive day count, day 1,142. Y'all, we're picking up on page 153 of the OASPI. And then we will jump right over here to the meditation book where we left off at on page 164. All right, y'all. Day 124. All right, y'all. So let's get started. Father, we thank you for another day to be here searching for truth. Thank you for leading us and guiding us every day and adjusting us if we get something wrong. We thank you for the heart to want to know truth and to correct our ways when we realize that we might be off. Hallelujah. Read them. Good morning. I'm Table and Brown. Shalom, shalom. Okay, y'all. We stop at page 153 at the top in chapter 3 in the book of Fragapati, son of Jehovah. All right. <clears throat> but the dawn came, and in the wind of Gumachala, home of Fragapati, Orion chief in the Ethereum world's high standing, came the voice, Jehovah's word, saying, My son, Behold, the dawn of Dan is near it. I'm sorry. The dawn of Dan neareth the border of Horeb. The wailing earth, the red star cometh apace. And God and lords call out the name of my infant son, Zaru, Zarathustra. Hmm, Zarathustra, Levine, blessings. There was a picture. What was it back here? Zarathustra? Yeah, okay, so. I'm going to show y'all this picture. It didn't say go back, but I'm going to show you this picture. This is a picture of Zarathustra. That guy right there. He kind of looked like he's from the, from like the 60s. He had a perm. I don't know. He can't really tell what color he might be. I can't really tell for real. I can't tell if he like a uh, fair skin or maybe just really, really light skin. I don't know. Or it kind of, I don't know. He could be like Indian or something. I don't know. But the faces around him definitely look like fair skin or like Caucasian people. I should have got pictures here. Yeah. Okay. I guess we're going to learn a little bit about Zara, Zara Thustra. Okay. I'll read the verse again. <clears throat> but the dawn came, and in the wing of Gu Machala, home of Fragapati, Orion chief in the Ethereum world's high standing, came the voice, Jehovah's word, saying, My son, behold the dawn of Dan, neareth the border of Horeb, the wailing earth, the red star, Cometh apace, and God and Lords call out the name of my infant son, Zarathustra. Fragapati rose up, hearing the voice, and saw the time fulfilled, the two hundred years and more for the coming world, the time for the revealed world, the time for the revealed word to mortals. To thee, O Jehovah, he said, Boundless I come with my host. 10 millions strong. Alicia, yeah. Queen Israel, grand rising. Mom, shalom, shalom. Verse 3. Fragapati went into the Ethereum council of gods and goddesses. He said, the time hath come. The red star borders on the plains of Horeb. Jehovah calleth. Then the council rejoiced for the weighty matters of hundreds of Ethereum worlds were settled for a pace of time with promised rest and recreation in corporal fields. First spake Adar, God of many worlds, a decreer of time in Ajian vortices in the regions of His 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 Spain. 
Hispian. It says Hispian. H-I-S-P-I-A-I-N. Okay. In the regions of Hispian sons, saying, O Jehovah, give to thy son Fragapati five years rest, the dawn of earth and Dan, only the earth and her heavens to deal with. Next spake Fiv Fivaka, goddess of three Ethereum worlds, the white haired wielder of the Smetar of bars, period of Os, carbon fashioner for the arcs of Job and Saul. She said, O Jehovah Almighty, what shall be the prayer of thy daughter, Fivaka? What can her love devise for the rest and glory of our high god, Fragapati, Orion chief? Then spake Chesson, marshal in chief for seven Ethereum worlds, small man with flowing beard brought forth from the star Ender. He said, O Jehovah, make me contributor of my much love to the rest and glory of our holy chief, Fragapati. Thus spake 10,000 gods and goddesses of their love and high esteem for the worker, Fragapati, rich in power and wisdom and love above all Ethereum gods and Horeb. Fragapati said, 10 million strong my host shall be on the earth and her heavens during her dawn of Dan, five years and 50 days. We shall have no other labor, thus making it as a holiday for gods and goddesses to redeem the fallen world. Fragapati had spoken. So the proper officers and workmen proceeded to their parts, and in seven days the Yaddle announced the fire ship, the BN float, ready for the journey. Meantime, the selection of the 10 million redeemers had been made, and they came, everyone like a brilliant star, to take their rooms in the monarch vessel. Fragapati made Hood commander in chief and gave him 10,000 aids. For the curtains and talij, he made Metrov, goddess of Rook, mistress to the flowing east. And for the spires, he made Yata, mistress of restless morn. She was weaver to Gaing and Reth. 4,000 years and much love with black eyes piercing of music, Fragapati made the retiviv conductor. She was goddess of helm, an Ethereum world in the roadway in the roadway of Z and Olus, four thousand years, mistress of Neolt and Exan, one time companion to Etesii, the Veruji, loved in Juan and Sangawich for her mirth in adversity. Of the trumpeters, Fragapati made Bone, B-O-A-N, conductor. He was god of Zalata, now on leave of absence. For Cartus, he made Yan the chief. He was surveyor of Oatha, an Ethereum sea in the Orion Ark of Wade, and Holland Pochava. Holland Pochava. Also on leave of absence during the Red Star Dawn. Of libraries, he made Heta, chief mistress. She was goddess of Vicia in the wells of South. It says E-N-G. I wonder if that's short for England. Ing was just Ing. I don't think it's short. It's just E-N-G. In the wells of South Ing, 30,000 years teacher of Imes and 10,000 years counselor of Orion chief, heiress of the Ark Wamis. Besides these, Fragapati distributed the minor offices of the float to such gods and goddesses whose most exalted states were the extreme opposite that the great journey through Etheria be the traverse of all serious purpose. And thus they started on their course amidst the applause of thousands of millions of Ethereans, wishing them love and joy on their mirthful cruise and furtherance of Jehovah's will. Speeding swiftly across the swamps of Ul, where seven corporal stars were dismembered a thousand million years ago, 
now set with Aegean fields and forming nebula, whereto they bring, at times, the Druhas, the dark spirits of other worlds, that they may take on the semblance of corporal forms to complete their neglected good works in times past. The ships, the ship rose freely, and they shot into the pastures of Zed, where Lepsa, god of corporal star, Tessa, 400 years, feedeth 70 million Esians, colonizing them to truth and good works. And up here after they shot into the pastures of Zay, after they, it has reference number four, which says at the bottom, and then. Yeah, that's it. And then. Okay. Lepsa knew. Trina, hey, guy, hey. Uncle JB. Grand Rising. Lepsa knew the float was coming and so had called a thousand million spectators to look on, knowing they desired to see great Fragapati. And they sang and blew their trumpets, rejoicing, to which the gods and goddesses of the float cast out myriads of Archean flowers and sweet perfumes, mementos of love. To evil, E V U L, to evil, now the ship made way, where seven Ethereum worlds border in the Ark of Nu, pastures of Elim, god of Ushin, U Usin, <clears throat> yeah, U Usin, god of Usin, where congregated another host of 2,000 million to see them pass, cheering with singing and with trumpets and string instruments. And to this god, Elim, Fragapati calls the banners of the float to salute on the sign Jehovah's name, being friends for 90,000 years. And Elim answered him with a million posts of light amidst the waving of innumerable banners. Onward moved the float, the fire ship, with its 10 million joyous souls, now nearing the borders of Horeb, the boundary of Fragapati's honored regions, known for hundreds of thousands of years and for his work on many worlds. Here, reaching Savorkum, the roadway of the solar phalanx near the post of Dan, where were quartered 500 million Ethereans on a voyage of exploration of more than 4 million years rich stored with the glories of great Jehovah's universe. Their Kalu, their ship, was almost like a world, so vast and stored with all apparatuses. They talked of going home. Their pilots had coursed the firmament since long before the earth was made and knew more than a million roadways in the Ethereum worlds and where best to travel to witness the grandest contrasting scenes. By their invitation, Fragapati halted here a while, and the hosts interchanged their love and discoursed on their purposes, rejoicing in the glories of Jehovah's of Jehovah's everlasting kingdoms. And though they had lived so long and seen so much, everyone had new and wondrous works to tell of, for so great is the inventive power of the great spirit that never twice alike will one find the scenes in the Ethereum worlds, radiant, differently, moving into everlasting changes as if one were to outdo the former in beauty and magnificence. This is beautiful. And it's always like every time somebody is coming to the earth to help whip her in shape, get her in order, like to get on the same course of learning that everybody else is. It's almost like it's a parade for the next God who's coming to help us here, like banners of light and everybody's joyous and cheering. It's like a big parade or a procession, right? This is, this is amazing. Shayla G, great rising. Yeah, I look, right, Lindsay? <laughs> I keep saying Lindsay like it's your first name, right, Will? We all need to be on that ship. Look, okay, verse 15. And then again, they sped onward, now richly stored with the all staring wonders they had just heard. Hold on. And then again, they sped onward, 
now richly stored with the awe-stirring wonders they had just heard from strange travelers. Presently, now the float neared the borders of Chinvat, the Earth's vortex, just beyond the orbit of the moon. Here, Fragapati halted for a day, sending swift messengers down to the lower heavens and to the Earth to resolve where he should anchor during dawn. And the next day, he ordered the lights lowered and now slowly moved down and slowly moved toward the rolling earth, down, down, till he reached the third grade of plateau from the earth's surface called Horati or Horati, H-A-R-A-I-T-I. All right, that was the end of chapter three. Chapter four, Francis, Shalom. Jehovah said, here, O oh my son, Fragapati, here in Horati have I laid the foundation of thy kingdom. Make fast here the fire ship five years and 50 days. Call forth thy host, build thou a throne of my throne. The voice of thy creator is with thee. Fragapati said, throne of thy throne, O Jehovah, here will I build. Horati shall be my headquarters for the dawn of Dan. Come forth, O ye gods of dawn. Come forth, O ye goddesses of dawn. Hear the voice of the Son of Jehovah. Bow down, O ye heavens. The ship was anchored, and, and the ten millions came forth and assembled in a living altar. Fragapati raised his hand, saying, Throne of thy throne, O Jehovah. And the host raised their hands, and the elements took shape and majesty, rising into a throne brilliant as fire. Then Fragapati ascended and sat on the throne, saying, Glory be to thee, O Father, the highest. A light came down from the Ethereum firmament and covered the throne over with a, with a canopy wide enough for five million men to sit under. And at the borders of the canopy, the Ethereans, whose work it fell to, set up columns of crystals, opaque and transparent, illuminated in all possible colors and shades and tints. Fragapati said, From thy council chamber, O Jehovah, will I build to thee forever. And now the host, gods and goddesses, held up their arms, lifting and casting in, and lo and behold, there rose and stood the habitable Moru, council chamber and capital of Horati. Then to prayers all hands turned, glorifying the Father, then in singing with praise. After which Fragapati said, In thy name and by thy power and wisdom, O Jehovah, will I now establish heaven anew over the earth. My marshals shall now proceed down to the earth and command the presence of God and his lords and all such others as can endure this light. They shall hear my voice and learn my decrees. 10,000 marshals saluting, departing for the earth and regions below. Fragapati said, Meanwhile, I will appoint to my high council the first, I will appoint my, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Fragapati said, Meanwhile, I will appoint my high council of the first house of Moru, gods and goddesses of dawn. Hear me then in the name of Jehovah, the all light. Koka, God of Aram, Ata, Ata, Kasha, God of Baratis, Ariyama, God of Cruz, Pathema, Goddess of Rhone, Madhar, Madharya, Madharya, ya, what? Hold on. Maid, Hai, Yar, Ya, Mistress of Karyam, Gatha, Ahuna Veti, goddess of Halange, Rama Kukra, god of verse, Vahista, god of Volu, and after Volu it has in brackets speech, Aram Isha, god of I Isis, Isisi, the Mayazdas, Ha. I got a sound about y'all. Don't laugh at me. 
Hop Tan Hati, God of Sumatras, Yima, God of Aom, Sud Sudga, God of Laka. I feel like I'm reading through Corinthians, <laughs> not Corinthians, Chronicles. <laughs> through all these crazy names the Hebrews had. Iragha, God of Bukdi, Elisi, goddess of Nisiris, Harati, Har, Har, Har Waiti, goddess of Hawumat and Aji, Dus, goddess of Verin Thagna, Wedimati, goddess of Dahama, Quactra, goddess of Igima, Uta, U, Usta Veti, goddess of Mahamaru, Kura, goddess of Corona, Yin, goddess of Aka, Koshianto, god of Ab Aberet, Rath Waiska, god of Huri, Spintas, god of Butts, Virio, god of Nuga Gala, Dezota and her brother Zeota, god and goddess of Atur Vishkasha, Wraith Waskir, goddess of Nis, Yatha, god of Amishas, and Kaha, god of Sarak. Jen, Grand Rising, Big Nate, peaceful greetings. Tiffany, hey, girl, hey. Fraga Patty said, O Jehovah, behold the glory of my house. I have chosen only such as have ruled over whole worlds. Was ever a God so favored with such a council? Was ever so great a light sent to so small a world as the red star? Jehovah said, as I have created man to need relaxation at times, so have I carried the same conditions to be desired by my highest of gods. Neither have I exalted any God so high, but the most menial office is his glory. Neither shall the autocrat learn sympathy till he liveth with a beggar, nor the highest best man learn love and tenderness without taking a season in the depths of misery. Oh, that's so good. Listen to that. Let me read that again, y'all. Look, Jehovah said, Jehovah said, as I have created man to need relaxation at times, so have I carried the same conditions to be desired by my highest of gods. Neither have I exalted any God so high, but the most menial office is his glory. Neither shall the autocrat learn sympathy till he liveth with a beggar, nor the highest best man learn love and tenderness without taking a season in the depths of misery. Fraga Patty said, Shall the strong man forget he was once a child? Can an Orion chief forget he was once a slave? Can he that is in the light forget them that are in the dark? Mighty art thou, O Jehovah. I came to the earth and her heavens to rest myself in thy service, but thou wert here before me. Thy voice rises up to rebuke me. Yea, I am still but a child to thee. That's good. Chapter 5. We're on page uh, 157, reading the heavenly account in the book of Fragapati, Son of Jehovah. When Fragapati had selected both departments of his council, which comprised 100,000 souls, he said, When a god espoused a new kingdom, it is customary for him to create his own capital and affix the boundaries of his lights and hall of audience. But when he have gods and goddesses for his assistance, it is meet and proper for them to help in the buildings. In this case, I give into your hands to provide, to provide this realm. Hardly had his words gone forth when the gods and goddesses stretched forth their hands unto Jehovah and lo and behold, the elements of the plateau took shape, and there stood the canopy of the new kingdom. Then again, 
they stretched forth their hands to Jehovah, and there came the walls of the house of heaven, and yet again stretched forth their hands to Jehovah, and there came the floor and the foundation. And the house was called the house of Moru, the place of the throne of Fragapati in the lower heavens. On the plains beyond the house, Fragapati created thousands. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> and the house was called the house of Moru, the place of the throne of Fragapati in the lower heavens. On the plains beyond the house, Fragapati created a thousand fields and pastures, and in each and every one, he created 10,000 mansions, and every mansion was capable of 1,000 souls. With roadways from one another, Fragapati created them, his host being the workman in the wisdom and power of Jehovah. Whilst this work was going on, the marshals who went down to the earth returned, bringing God and his lords with them and also bringing with them 1,200,000 spirits of the second resurrection. Fragapati commanded them to bring God and his lords into the house of Moru, and they were so brought. Fragapati said, In the name of Jehovah, I salute thee, O God, and thy lords and thy hosts. God said, In, the name, in thy name, O Jehovah, am I and my lords and my hosts blessed with great joy, that thou, O Fragapati, has come to redeem the earthborn and the spirits of these heavens is a joyful period in the time of worlds. And just a quick recap. Remember, those who hold the title God here is actually like the president of the earth, the, the current ruling God at that particular time, because we know it hasn't been one particular one that ruled and reigned for the whole time. It's been multiple sons and daughters. And also those who hold God or goddess are also, they also carry the term simultaneously son or daughter. So it's not just sons who rule over the earth or, or whatever um, world it is. But for the sake of what we know here, here on this planet, so we can get to going where we should be going. They're, they're telling us about the other worlds that they were God or goddess of, but the, the, um, the focus is here, the earth, and why we're not moving like we should, right? And so all the transitions of the different guys and the different periods and how we got to where we're at and where we should be, right? So when you hear God is not talking about the great spirit or the great creator who we refer to as Yah, right? Some people say the great spirit, some people say the universe or, or whatever, but God is not the great creator. It's the one who's currently ruling the earth. And it could be a god or it could be a goddess. From what I understand, from what I've gathered so far, I think we're under the ruling of a goddess during our lifespan here. Although they've been ruling for a little while, right? Um, but definitely the whole time, while I don't know. I don't know precisely the time change. I'm still trying to understand all that. But anyway, according to this, that's what the title God and Goddess is, the one who is currently ruling and lords and lord gods are actually titles of those in their cabinet that are helping to rule with them. Just like the president have different people in their cabinet who hold different positions to help them run the world or whatever, or the United States. It's the, it's the same thing. Earlier on in some of the earlier chapters, they actually do the breakdown of the hierarchy. So just in case you was getting kind of twisted, when it says Jehovah, they refer to the great spirit or Yah as Jehovah throughout this whole book. So you don't get it mixed up when they say God, Goddess, Lord, Lord God, Asaphs, Ashars. I think it's the Ashars that are the, the what we call guardian angels. But there's a whole chapter that goes through all of that. Okay, verse five. Whilst this work was going on, the marshals who went down to the earth returned, bringing God and his lords with them, and also bringing with them 1,200,000 spirits of the second resurrection. Fragapati commanded them to bring God and his lords into the house of Moru, and they were so brought. Fragapati said, In the name of Jehovah, I salute thee, O God, and thy lords and thy hosts. God said, in thy name, O Jehovah, am I, and my lords and my hosts, blessed with great joy, 
that thou, O Fragapati, has come to redeem the earthborn and the spirits of these heavens is a joyful period in the time of worlds. And also those who graduate during a particular uh, season, they are, those who graduate from the earth are called brides and bridegrooms, right? Okay, so when we graduate, meaning we have reached a grade of 50, at least 50, because you can't graduate from the earth until you reach at least the grade 50, meaning your spirit has been developed far enough to where when you pass away, you won't get stuck in the Ethereum uh, realm at the lowest heaven where you become a Druha or, you know, uh, where you turn wicked, right? And you, and the church will call those spirits demons right or satanic because <clears throat> they latch themselves onto the humans they they possess them they want to take up residence <laughs> in your body put you in a sunken place or take over your house all that stuff so this is really really enlightening <clears throat> it brings a lot of clarity to some of the things that we're taught in the church or have taught in a church okay verse eight the lord's the lord's said for ourselves and our hosts, O Jehovah, do we thank thy son, Fragapati. Fragapati said that thou, O God, mightest know my decrees. I commanded thee and thy lords and their exalted hosts hither. Hear me then and to whom I send thee. Do thou my commandments in the name of Jehovah. The time hath come when mortals on earth shall begin their lessons in spiritual things proven being themselves made part in the building of Jehovah's kingdom. And after hath come when mortals on earth shall begin their lessons and spiritual things proven, it um, has reference number five, and it said, hath now come. Or so the time hath now come for these things to begin to happen. We need to start helping these humans graduate. Okay. Yeah. Oh, we have 32 minutes. We'll finish this chapter. Okay, we'll finish chapter five. Through thee, the present reigning of God of the earth and her heavens must be carried out. Must be carried out the death and resurrection of thy chosen heir, Zarathustra, to prove first that man on the corporal earth can live all pure and without sin. Second, that corporal death belongeth to the earth body of man and not to the spirit. And third, that after death, the same person can rise in spirit and appear to mortals to be seen and known, after which he shall show his final ascent toward the upper heavens in the arms of his God. Let me read the whole verse again. Through thee, the present reigning of God of the earth and her heavens must be carried out the death and resurrection of thy chosen heir, Zarathustra, to prove First, that man on the corporal earth can live all pure and without sin. Second, that corporal death belongeth to the earth body of man and not to the spirit. And third, that after death, the same person can rise in spirit and appear to mortals to be seen and known, after which he shall show his final ascent toward the upper heavens in the arms of his God. Robin, shalom, shalom. What that sound like, y'all? That sound just like JC, don't it? I'm just saying, we'll keep reading. Whilst this cometh upon thee in person to carry out, thou shalt also, through thy ministering angels, prove to mortals the advantage of virtue and truth over sin and darkness. For thou shalt cause also to be stricken in death two evil men who are all impure, and they shall suffer death at the same time. What? This definitely sounds like JC. Hold on. Pause. Listen. Let's say this. Let me read this again. Verse 11. Whilst this cometh upon thee in person to carry out, thou shalt also, through thy ministering angels, prove to mortals the advantage of virtue and truth over sin and darkness. But thou shalt cause also to be stricken in death two evil men who are all impure, and they shall suffer death at the same time with thy heir, Zarathustra, 
but these shall not have power of themselves to appear before mortals after death. For mortals shall hereafter be a testimony to one another of the reward of virtue and the power of being one with the gods, sons of Jehovah. And after, um, but these things shall not ha have power of themselves to appear. It has reference number six after not. And it says at the bottom, these shall not have power of themselves to appear. It's the same thing, but have has a bracket before it. And after two, have power of themselves too. There's the ending bracket. Okay. Verse 12. But since all attestation by spirits can be set at defiance by the craft of philosophers, thou shalt not wait till after death of thy heir to, <laughs> to teach the truths of the father's kingdom, but beforehand, causing Zarathustra, whilst yet mortal, to write down rules of mortal life and doctrines and faith and repentance and praise of the great spirit and of prophecy and all manner of righteous gifts and the power of miracles and the triumph of the spirit of man over corporal elements. And when thou hast completed these things, thou shalt bring the spirit of Zarathustra to this house, but the drukes who suffer death with him shall do thou shalt deliver in the usual way to the places prepared for their resurrection. Tell me then, how standeth thy heir? And ask thou of me whatsoever thou wilt to assist thee to carry out these my decrees, and it shall be granted unto thee. God said, Zarathustra hath attained his twentieth year and comprehendeth the destiny put upon him. He is pure and wise, with faith and gentleness, but he is larger and more powerful than any other man in the world. He is instructed both in the spiritual and corporal senses and having a knowledge of the books of the ancients and of writing and making tablets. Fragapati said, five years shalt thou have in which to complete thy labor. Depart, here, depart therefore to thy place taking with thee such of thy lords and hosts as thou mayest require. I will appoint a thousand messengers to travel betwixt thy place and this, that every day thou shalt ask for this or that, it shall be granted unto thee. To which God replied, I will go now and cause Zarathustra to write a book of wisdom and give him prophecy over the kings and nations and tribes of men. What I do shall be proven to thee in more rue. Thus saying, God withdrew a little and selected his lords and such other assistants as he desired. And after this, Fragapati granted a day of recreation, in which time the Ethereans were made well acquainted with the conditions of mortals and of the thousands of millions of spirits still lingering in the first resurrection and in darkness and chaos. On the next day, on the next day, God and his host departed for the earth, well attended by thousands of volunteers from the Ethereum sojourners of Horati. And that is the end of chapter five. Where we at? 39 minutes? Yeah, okay. Z Robin said, Zarathustra talked about this over 5,000 years ago in the Gathas. Good thoughts, good words, good deeds. Path called Zarathustrian. Asha is truth and righteousness, faith on the one God. That's good. Okay, so, yeah. So, I, um, Z Z is it, that's how you say it, Zarathustrian? Zoroastrian. I I got something on that. I really didn't get deep into it, so I'm not really sure what's in it. And I think I got like a couple books, and it talks about that. And a few others make reference to those books, but like I said, I haven't really gotten into it. But thank you for that, Robin. Okay, so we are going to pause right here at chapter. Yeah, we'll pause right here at chapter six. We'll pick this back up here tomorrow. But look, when I was looking ahead yesterday after this, in the book of 
Y'all gonna really enjoy this. Is it the Book of Divinity? I think it's in the Book of Divinity. It starts... No, I'm sorry. The first book of God. Which is after... We got the Book of Spenta. Daughter of Jehovah. Okay, so after the Book of Divinity, you have um, the Book of Spenta Armes, Daughter of Jehovah for the Heavenly Account. And right under that one is the first book of God. In the first book of God, it gets into stuff that reminds us of um, Exodus and Moses, right? So it literally, it talks about Abraham. It talks about... Um, what they call him? Did they call him? I don't remember that they called him Moses, but I was like, that is definitely Moses. Because it talks about um, the basket of reeds and the baby floating down the river. All that stuff. I was like, oh, this is going to be really good. Right, so I'm really looking forward to getting to the first book of God. But I just wanted to let y'all know that, um, yeah, when you get to chapter, what is this? Five, six, seven, eight. Chapter eight in the first book of God, it talks about um, Abram, a man chosen by God for the children of Arabia, which is Arabia, right? So that's, that's kind of interesting. Gives us a, a, a another take what we haven't well most of us haven't currently heard about and it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah in here um it's really interesting lot is they mentioned lot lot the elder escaped and went and lived in the cave this was pretty good so before we actually read this aloud I'm sure I'm gonna be back here reading through this because you know Exodus is my book I love the book of Exodus so um I just wanted to let y'all know and it begins on page 263 of uh, the Oaspe. So just in case you were trying to see what all that fit in that, you know, this uh, that'll kind of shed some light on some things. So just in case. All right, y'all. So let's hop on over here. The God, so Francis said, the gods or goddesses ruled by arc cycles. 2400 or 3200 arc cycles that's right i remember reading that i'm you know me i'm still trying to get my math together y'all yeah so uh gotta go back i forget exactly which chapter but it is definitely towards the beginning where it goes into the arc cycles a little bit and it give you references and charts towards the back of the book i couldn't even tell you which uh video well, we actually kind of read over that a little bit. Because sometimes I'll, if it's something that I I want to remind myself of, I'll try to put it in a title with some kind of catchiness so I remember it's that particular video. But it's it's definitely one of the OASB videos from the time we started. Try like in the first week or something when we were reading it. Um, and it'll, throughout the reading, you will see the, the chapter that it is. But I can't tell you right off the top of my head. But we definitely read through that. But thank you for that, Francis. Okay. So, tech, meditation technique number three is where we paused at yesterday on page 165. All right. We got, we got, we got 44 minutes. Okay. Meditation technique number three. The basic serpent power meditation based on ancient Egyptian wisdom teachings, right? So they call it serpent power or kundalini energy. Um, and in church, they, um, I don't know, they kind of really, I wouldn't say they, it, it's the same as the Holy Spirit because their definition of the Holy Spirit is like a, the third person of the Trinity. But it, it's really what I understood like the, the Holy Spirit is 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 still yah because he is holy right um but it's simply the energy that flows through your body that's how that's how they or the life force that flows through okay the subject of life force energy and the sublimation of sexual energy into spiritual energy existed many thousands of years in egypt prior to its development in modern India under the name Kundalini Yoga. 
It later appears in many parts of the world, but it did not find extensive documentation until the sages of India composed the voluminous scriptures in relation to Kundalini Yoga. Since the topic of serpent power yoga is so vast, a full treatment of it would be, uh, would be beyond the scope of this work. He actually has a book that's dedicated to specifically that, right? Um, I have that. Just look it up. Type in um, Dr. Moada Ashby, Kundalini Yoga. And that book is called, if I remember correctly, it's called Serpent Power. I got it. Um, but look it up. I haven't gone through it. I just kind of flipped through it a little bit, but I haven't really focused on it yet. But it, it's everything about the energy that flows, all the different terms that relates to it, the different cultures, what they call it, all that stuff. All that is in there. Okay. Since the topic of the serpent power of yoga is so vast, a full treatment of it would be beyond the scope of this work. And I'll, I'll post the book. I'll give you the link to Amazon. Let me see and put serpent power. Post. Okay. Just in case you want to check it out. As in the Indian chakra system, the ancient Egyptian Sephic Ba Ra or seven spheres are related to the seven energy centers of the subtle body, which are not visible to the ordinary eye and are in the same space as the physical spine, though not in the same plane as the physical body. They are linked to the awakening of one's spiritual powers and consciousness. As one progresses on their spiritual path of evolution, while either purposely employing a yogic spiritual discipline, which is studying application of spiritual and philosophic scriptures, reflection and meditation, or learning through the process of trial and error, these centers will automatically open, allowing one to experience increasing communion with the higher self, God. The process of raising one's spiritual power may be aided by specific exercises such as concentration, proper breathing, meditation on the meaning of the spiritual symbols, and surrendering to the will of the higher self, God. These techniques allow one to transform one's waking personality so that one may discover their innermost self, God. This should be done under the guidance of a qualified teacher or a spiritual master it has in parentheses. Oh, you're welcome, Robin. The energy centers of the subtle body are likened to a tree which the aspirant climbs through personality integration, which leads to in, intuitional realization of the transcendental self. The process of creation, the creative energy manifests in the form of six planes of consciousness. This is the realm of phenomenal reality, including physical, astral, and mental existence. Most people exist on the level of the first three energy consciousness levels. The goal of this yoga is to unite the six phenomenal consciousness centers with the seventh or the transcendental realm of consciousness, the absolute. The absolute is what various religions refer to by different names, such as the kingdom of heaven, Asar, Krishna, Brahman, the tail, etc. The serpent power energy flows throughout thousands of energy channels. If any of the energy channels are blocked or are blocked or oversensitized, a disbalance can arise, causing illness in the mind and physical body. There are three most important channels through which the serpentine life force flows. These are Asar, also Amun-Ra, Aset, and Nebahet. And after Aset and Nebahet, it has reference number 22. And at the bottom it says, see the books, The Serpent Power. That's, that's the name of the book, The Serpent Power, and The Book of the Dead. So remember, The Book of the Dead, he has one, The Book of the Dead, but it's, it's talking about the Impert Haru, which is the coming forth by day, or it's called the Book of Enlightenment or the Book of Life. 
they just gave it a, a, a scary name and called it the Book of the Dead, which is not, that was kind of like a gatekeeper, which kept me from actually researching into it and getting it for a very long time because it said the Book of the Dead. I didn't want to call, cause, I didn't want to be talking to dead spirits or conjuring up anything dead. So that's what I thought when I read the titles. I was like, ooh, we better stay away from that, right? The red flags go up, taught about in Christianity, mm, red flags stay away. You don't communicate with dead, right? But the more I kept I kept getting this inkling, just open it up and glance at it first. And so you can see what it is. And so when I, I did, I'm like, oh, wait. Wait, no, this is talking about actually waking your sleeping spirit up. And it refers to the flesh as a mummy, right? A tomb that our real self is encased in. And you have to wake this up. Get this under control and that I was hooked. I was like, yo, I've been saying this. This is what this is. And I realized that they, they call the name, the book of the dead, they actually call it a misnomer because that's not its original name. That's what we'll say colonizers named it to keep you out of truth that you really should have, which really had been passed down as a normal thing since birth. The Pert M. Haru or the book of life, the book of coming forth by day, right? It ain't got nothing to do with the night. It's trying to bring you out of the dark of night. Okay. Let's go back. These are represented by the Egyptian caduceus of Jehudi, which is composed of a staff which has two serpents wrapped around it. Oh, sweet. So. Okay, sweet. Oh, well, I'm ready to go as soon as we're done here. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. And don't start her crying. I'm live. And she's going to throw a fit. The two, the two opposing forces and the life force energy of a human being are balanced by the various practices of yoga in an integral fashion, increasing wisdom, reflection, practice of virtues, purification of the diet, exercise, and specific serpent power breathing exercises eventually cause the opposites to balance, and then they rise through the central, subtle channel up the spine into the head where they eventually become established, providing a continuous shower of bliss to the practitioner. I'm going to read that again. The two opposing forces and the life force energy of a human being, and it's referring to the um, the caduceus, right? So if you see a cadu the medical caduceus or the staff or Moses' staff, like the snake wrapped around it, that's like the, I don't say the origin of the caduceus, but that's what they're talking about because that's where the medical field gets the caduceus from. The medical staff with the snake look at the snake heal right um but what that represents is our spine the staff moses staff is literally our spine right and the snakes that wrap around it the two and they go like the figure eight wrapping around it it's the opposing the the negative and the positive energy forces or the life force energy or the serpent power or um the the whatever you want to call it, the kundalini energy that flows up through our spine, representing the chakra points or the energy points all the way up to the crown chakra from the root base chakra, right? Audrey, shalom, shalom. Let me read it again. The serpent power energy flows throughout thousands of energy channels. If any of the energy channels are blocked or oversensitized, a disbalance can arise, causing illness in the mind and physical body. There are three most important channels through which the serpentine life force flows. These are Asar, also Amun-Ra, Aset, and Nebahet. These are represented by the Egyptian caduceus of Jehudi, which is composed of a staff which has two serpents wrapped around it. The two opposing forces and the life force energy of a human being are balanced by the various practices of yoga in an integral fashion, increasing wisdom, reflection, 
practice of virtues, purification of the diet, exercise, and specific serpent power breathing exercises eventually cause the opposites to balance and then they rise through the central subtle channel up the spine into the head where they eventually become established providing a continuous shower of bliss to the practitioner so as the energy is rising at every level that's that we're we're taught at that level to bring that particular area of our life into balance right starting at the bottom which is the root which is security then you have the what is it the root shot was it the root sacral solar plexus but anyway when you get to the different ones the 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 heart the throat the heart represents like relationships your love loving yourself and loving others when you get to the throat how you speak you speak in church words do you speak curses or do you speak life everything has to be born into balance because if one is off you can't continue climbing the ladder so the process of spiritual growth is for you to take your dirty lights and shine them up right and when all your lights are shining brightly when they're shining brightly, that means all the bad energy has been cleared out, if you want to term it that way. It's been purified, right? You're walking in righteousness in that level, right? The first thing we got to get a hold of is our flesh, our appetite, and our sexual nature. When that's out of whack, you can't even go to the next one. So until you get your security down under control, your sexual nature under control, your eating habits under control, you, if you don't get those under control, you cannot rise past, I want to say, the solar plexus level. I think it's the solar plexus level. Yeah, because you're going to have major issues trying to rise to the heart, right? If those things are out of whack, because your sexual nature should be in line definitely with your heart. And if you, you can, you don't have to have like a thriving relationship, but you have to be in balance with your nature if you're not in a committed relationship with somebody else. Yeah, right. Okay. So yeah, you definitely cannot, you, you can't rise past, you can't rise past the heart chakra. Well, you can get up there, but you're not going to go anywhere. Like if you're having multiple relationships sexually, it's going to throw things out of whack because you, it, it, it has to be balanced all the way around. Like I, I, I forget which book I read one that talks about that. Which one is it? It was going into some detail. And even in the book, um, uh, uh, The Raw Contact, towards the end of the first volume, they start getting a little bit more. They start asking about the chakras and the sexual nation. They even talked about that that you can only rise so high if you don't get your sexual nature under control. Because when you become disciplined, you should be able to transmute that sexual energy. You don't let your sexual drive drive you. But there is a purpose for other than just procreation and having fun and feeling good. You can actually take that same energy and you can transmute it and, and literally like give it to the divine. And it'll kind of shoot you up a little bit higher and it'll, it'll just, I don't know, it'll just help you grow. I can't give you all the, the schematics about it, but I just know by practicing it, it works. Good stuff. Real good stuff. <laughs> real good, real good stuff. <laughs> okay. So, all right. The two opposing forces and the life force energy of a human being are balanced by the various practices of yoga in an integral fashion. Increasing wisdom, reflection, practice of virtues, purification of the diet, exercise, and specific serpent power breathing exercises eventually cause the opposites to balance. And then they rise through the central subtle channel up the spine and into the head where they eventually become established, providing a continuous shower of bliss to the practitioner there are two stages of practice in the yoga of life force energy development the first stage of practice is the cleansing stage here the concentration is on cleansing the mind and body and on balancing the energy flow of the body the mind is purified by practicing the wisdom teachings. 
the body is purified by purifying the diet and regular practice of physical exercise. The energy flow is balanced by alternate nostril breathing. In order for your consciousness to unfold, your mind needs to be cleansed of gross impurities such as anger, hate, greed, selfishness, etc. And the physical body needs to be cleansed of mind-altering chemicals and elements of lower vibratory rate, which will cause the mind and body to be agitated and preoccupied with the desires of worldly concern. You can go ahead and open that. After the cleansing stage of serpent power yoga, wherein the elements of the body are cleansed, and the subtle energy channels of the body are cleansed, which may take months or years. The attention turns to the three main channels wherein spiritual realization unfolds. This is accomplished by manipulating the energy in the subtle mental planes and directing it towards the divine. Right? Kind of, we just kind of said that with the sexual energy, just taking it and transmuting it. <laughs> To the fire, to y'all. We almost done with this right here, y'all. Well, look beautiful. She looks beautiful, baby. I get her outfit. I know. Go on, sis. <laughs> the psychic energy centers in the spiritual or etheric body are distributed throughout the spine, going up from the base of the spine to the crown of the head, the uraeus. Each one of these centers are called the ba ra or vortexes of energy of Ra. And we'll learn when we get to the book, um, The Nine Eyes of Light, we're going to, I always mention this when it comes up, when it talks about the Ba and the Ra and the Ka, it's going to get in deep detail about that. It's literally going to split the body, all the realms or all the, all the bodies, the spiritual body, the astral body, the physical body, that is like a scientific book and gets into the details. That That is, everybody should have that. It's pretty expensive. And I think they sure don't stock. But if you can get it, get it. And the last time I checked, they didn't have it on Audible. Neither did they have it in uh, Kindle. But the last time I checked, I think it was like, it was knocking on $200. I got it a little over a year ago and I paid $124 for it. Okay, so but check it out. If you don't have it, just be patient. We're going to go through it here in a couple months. All right. Each one of these centers are called Ba-Ra, or vortexes of energy of Ra. In, Egypt, in Egyptian symbolism, they are depicted as circles or links in a chain in the karmic scales of the initiate. In Indian symbolism, they are portrayed as Padmas, P-A-D-M-A-S, or lotuses symbolizing psycho spiritual principles of human consciousness by understanding these and removing obstacles to them or rat sekim or life force energy is freed when your consciousness is freed you can move toward the divine essence of your being mental and emotional complexes and sentiments constitute the main obstacles and blocks to erratic him one's own spiritual consciousness through physical exercises physical cleansing through diet and lifestyle changes and meditation on the psycho spiritual implications of each center serpent power yoga is is effected and it has reference number 23 and at the bottom for 23 it says no for more on Serpent Power Yoga, see the book Serpent Power by Dr. Muwada Ashby. Oh, yeah, one of four. Okay. So, okay, let's let's finish this. Let's finish technique number four. It's not that much. It's a smaller paragraph, and then it has diagrams. And we're going to pause when we get to number five. We'll read number five tomorrow. Okay. The Serpent Power. <clears throat> the latent, and I'm going to take a picture of these diagrams and I'll post these today too so y'all can see it. I'll just post the whole thing for meditation technique number three. 
The latent spiritual energy lies dormant, coiled up, as it were, at the base of the spine, and when awakened, spirals upward, awakening the spiritual energy centers in the subtle spiritual body. This is the same depiction used in ancient Egyptian iconography. A, hold on. A, okay, A is over here, okay. This is the same depiction used in ancient Egyptian iconography, and it has A, which is the medical caduceus right here, right? This is A. That's what we're referring to as A. This is the same depiction used in ancient Egyptian iconography with the staff of the god Jehudi, which later became known as the Caduceus of Hermes Trismegistus. B, and this is B, I'll show you B right here. Ooh, of course, y'all can see I can kind of go on the head color and stuff. <laughs> That's a Facebook. B right here. YouTube right here. Okay. B is an artistic rendition of ancient Egyptian psycho spiritual energy centers. Okay, so I'll show it to you again. See the energy centers going up the spine, right? See the caduceus? It goes through the energy centers. So now, especially if you weren't taught about this from like the very beginning, when you start seeing pictures like this, it's like they don't start you with like the base stuff and how it builds up to being this. And then it just kind of like cut all this away. And now it would just look like new age chakra stuff when we just see these pictures out the blue. It's like, what is all this? Why are you, you know, or sometimes it's just the lights you know, going up and they don't understand how it's developed and why they use it this way. And it, that further removes us from the truth, but not giving us the whole story or not learning the background. That's why I think Dr. Mawada Ashby's books are so good because he always starts at the very beginning of the topic where it originated to where it is today. Right. This is so good. So now when you look at hieroglyphs or you see somebody using something, you will immediately spot if they're teaching you ignorantly it was like you don't really understand what you're teaching do you right you just took them pictures and diagrams and you're trying to teach something you heard without actually going to the beginning of the thing right all right oh now i know i know we haven't gotten to it yet but this picture right here and it's showing a light with the egyptian pharaohs and stuff when you see the hieroglyphs and you see they have the when they wear these crowns with the snake heads on it that's a representation that they have went through the entire process and they are literally all of their lights their chakra lights through their body are shining bright and they're always holding the onk in their hand or they're holding it or they're giving it to somebody else. Whenever they have these on, it doesn't mean that they're serpent kings. No, it means they are they are fully illumined. They are in constant contact with the great spirit, the great creator, or with Yah. They walk in righteousness. They don't even get this this serpent crown unless they live the life of purity and walk in righteousness they were righteous kings and queens or gods and goddesses and they always walked according to the principles of my eye or eternal life right they balance their energies the onk is it represents eternal life or balance between both polarities male and female the circle on top being the woman and her her vagina uh, which gives life. The bottom portion representing the male's penis, which also gives the seed to the woman to give life. It's the constant circle of life, eternal life. It was in balance, ma'at, right? When you see stuff like this, and you haven't been taught about the principles and all the different individual things, and when they're walking and holding the staff, and you don't know that that's, that's somebody righteous, y'all better back up, right? We get everything all chopped and screwed, but we don't understand a thing, right? So... I like these books and it takes us through. So when we see it, we like we really have a true understanding of what's being done. Right. So that when you understand this, you can almost immediately spot like real teachers who are teaching Egyptology and whatever they want to call themselves teaching. OK. In Indian icon iconography, C 
the three main nadis or astral channels through which the serpent power travels are depicted as one straight channel or a central shaft which runs vertically and two intertwining channels representing opposite poles of the same serpent power energy. And that's this one right here. All right. This is the same depiction used in ancient Egyptian iconography A with the staff of the god of Jehudi, which later became known as the as the Caduceus of Hermes Trismegistus. We'll learn a little bit about Hermes Trismegistus in the next book we're going to read, the little small pamphlet we're reading. Um, Y'all know what it is. Right on the top of my tongue. Okay. Um, the what is it, y'all? Then we just read the initiates of the flame. Is it the initiates of the flame? I think it's the initiates of the flame, right? And the Kabbalion. We're gonna learn about Hermes Trismegistus. Okay. Here's another diagram. Like I said, I'm gonna take a picture of this. So just look at it real quick, and I'm gonna read to you what's on the page. And we almost done. It's like two more diagrams after this. Okay, below, diagram of the psycho-spiritual energy centers of human consciousness, also known as the serpent power for concentration and meditation exercises. So at the top in a black bowl box, it said meditative principle, and it's numbered from seven down to one, Or, but I'm going to read them from one from the bottom going all the way up, which is representing... What each of the chakra lights stand for when you get this particular balance in your life. Let's see if I can read it like this. Okay, so we'll start at one down here, which is this chakra, which is the base root chakra, right? I am sustained and provided for by the self, right? So having a, <clears throat> a balanced chakra, you work through all the fears. Like that's like the root chakra. You have to get rid of the fears. All fears should be handled at this level right here. Fear of uh, security of just living. If you got like issues with abandonment, all 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 of those fears are handled here because you have to be grounded. You can't be grounded when you have fears running rampant in your life, right? And that's probably like the the first. I would say, well, it depends. Just depending on what your experience is in life. That may not be your hardest one. The next one, sexual, may be your hardest one, right? So after this one, after the uh, the, the first chakra, the root chakra, then you go to the sacral chakra, which is here, right? And when you get this balance, too, I will control and harness my sexuality and create positive thoughts, feelings, and impressions. And not to talk about anybody in their sexuality, but people who are having issues identifying who and what they are are stuck here at the sacral chakra, right? They're, they're confused. They don't know what to do if they've chosen to do something opposite from what they were created to be, right? They're, they're, they think their choice is better than the creator's, right? You made me wrong, so I'm going to fix this. They're stuck here. They cannot move any higher. I don't care how sweet and loving they are in, in regards to spiritual growth, they are they are stunted until they get this until they get this fixed. We'll just say that. The next chakra is the third one, which is the solar plexus. I will understand my potential to serve others. Right? So there's a relationship with other people. The acts of giving servitude, not servitude like you my slave, G, you know, but y'all get it, right? A healthy outlook, treating others, what Bible says, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, right? Treat others like you would treat yourself. And that's a, a I think that's here in Owasby gives a really good picture about how we should operate towards one another. We'll just say that. Okay, so next one, the fourth chakra, I will love and care for others and what? I will love and care for others and not, and not, and not what? Oh, I guess you can just fill this in. I will love and care for others and not treat them like garbage. Y'all get it, right? But that's the, that's the heart chakra right here. Then you go up one, two, three, four. The fifth one 
is the throat chakra communication if your communication is out of whack you don't know how to communicate you 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 popping off at the mouth sister's necks rolling all of that you got an issue with the throat chakra right and if you got an issue with the throat chakra you definitely got an issue with the heart right um and it says right here five i have the power to control my probably your tongue your mouth if you get popped a lot, you get smacked a lot in the mouth. People want to haul off and punch you in the mouth. Your throat chakra probably a little bit dirty, right? <laughs> then you move up to the sixth chakra, which is the third eye right here. Spirit and matter have the same substance, maybe. I, I would say spirit and matter have the same substance. They're just opposite sides of the, the, the coin, rather. And here... This doesn't even open. Huh. I mean, I guess you could get it to open prematurely. But what you see could be hampered, hindered, could be possibly skewed, depending on how clean or how dirty these are. Right? So if all you seeing is the negative of what you see is, um, yeah, if, if all, all of what you see is negative, it's probably an indication that something is going wrong with these other channels. And you need to first look at yourself, right? If you're constantly having otherworldly entities of the negative polarity showing themselves more than the the more holier ones, there's definitely something going wrong in here. And it's probably it possibly may take you back to here to the sexuality one and the uh, but the sexuality also is not just sex, it's also appetite, eating as well, right? You could be eating a lot of meat, right? You got other entity energy inside of your body which is going to screw up what you're actually seeing all this stuff go together and so once all this is clean you got the the crown chakra right i am the self and this is where you connect with the great spirit so that's that okay all right so the next diagram over here is the same thing but i'll show this one to you we got one more after this i'm gonna read it all right, so at the top, it has the big number one, and under it with the arrows, it says the light of consciousness pointing to the entire body with the chakra lights going up. And so, oh, yeah, and so it's the same thing. And so starting down at the bottom for the first chakra, the root is fear and survival. Then the second chakra is sexuality and creativity. Then the third chakra, power and control over others. Then it's the fourth chakra which is the heart chakra which is which is universal love one two three four yeah then the fifth is the throat chakra which is self-control and then the third eye chakra is transcendental awareness and then the crown chakra is union with the cosmic self or with yah right and so the diagram under that is a triangle and it's listing the colors of each chakra of each of these going up with the um the first one being red then orange yellow green blue indigo violet if you were taught in in uh and these are actually the colors of the rainbow as well go figure why they would use certain symbols signs and colors for certain groups of people who choose to identify a certain type of way they screw up your thinking right which clouds this and so now people scared to wear rainbows and and pretty colors and stuff or feel that they might be misidentified as you know somebody who got their chakra lights all out of whack right i even struggle with that it's like because i love colors bright colors and uh but i won't put a rainbow together <laughs> but i'll do the different colors and stuff it's just i don't know something i'm still working with you know i really really shouldn't care what others think i really shouldn't right okay but the to remember the colors of the rainbow is a name roy g biv i was taught that in elementary school to help me to remember the primary the the colors of the rainbow in order roy g biv r being red o being orange y yellow g green b blue i indigo v violet roy g biv like roy is his first name g is the middle initial and biv b-i-v is the last name roy g biv okay and that 
is the end of the diagrams. And the last thing for here, for meditation technique number three, it says instruction. Practice concentrating on one meditative principle each month. As you reflect on each meditative principle, chant the words of power of your choice and direct your heart and mind toward the one toward one pointedness on that principle. Then remain in silence and allow the divine feeling to rise within you, lifting you above all weakness and difficulty, ignorance, obstruction in each particular center. Allow yourself to be cleansed and the serpent power will rise within you normally. And it has a little picture, which is a rat, the serpent power goddess of ancient Egypt. And so when you see that, that is the symbol for a rat. All right. And that is it for today, beautiful people. So, let me put my marker here. I stuck that in the wrong place. All right. So, I hope y'all enjoyed today. We'll be at an hour and 21 minutes. And then, okay. All right. So, I'll take a picture of this or a screenshot and I'll put this up just in case you want to study a little bit more or, you know, if you don't have the book yet or if you can't afford to get it. But I'll, I'll share it with you. So thank y'all for hanging out today, beautiful people. It is Thursday, June the 2nd, 2022, day 124 of the year four of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets and of the four-year consecutive day count without the Sabbaths because we rest day 1,142. We read pages 153 through 160 in online speed and in a meditation book, pages 164 through 170. And I remember to post the link along... Uh, with the screenshot of the picture, the Serpent Power Book, if you're interested in, in looking at it or getting it or, or what have you. So I'll do that here shortly before we leave out of here. But with that being said, thank y'all beautiful people for hanging out. May y'all continue to bless you in all that you do. And may all that you touch prosper for not only you, but you and your family and those in your sphere of influence. I love y'all. See y'all tomorrow, bright and early, 7.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace. Go ahead and end it, please.